Assalamu alaikum friends and welcome to a Muslim Mum podcast. Have your kids ever asked you the following question? Why does Islam have so many rules? Or why is Islam so strict? Is this something that you've been asked? I think it's something that a lot of children, teenagers in particular, do think about. I know my children have asked me this question. So I wanted to explore and give you an answer, a way, a method to answer that question with your teenage kids. So, um, and what I want to do is look at why our kids can sometimes view Islam as a burden and why, where is this idea coming from? Because if we can understand the source of that thinking, then inshallah we can address their questions and really help them to, you know, not feel so disgruntled and so reluctant when it comes to following Islamic rules. So let's begin. Um, now, this is the way I'm going to go through the way I would answer it. And inshallah, you know, once you've understood it, adapt it to your child, you know, to their age, um, and then have a calm discussion with them. You, you'll probably have several discussions with them, and that's a good thing. It's not the kind of thing you can just answer once and you think, yep, that's done. This will keep coming up throughout, you know, their, their, the years as they grow older. So, okay, so I would start by get, asking them some questions. So, for example, do you go to school? You know, they're going to answer yes. Um, do you line up in the canteen for lunch? Yep, they do. Do you dress in a certain way, i.e. school uniform? Or I know in America they, they don't have school uniform. In the UK we do. You know, do you stop at a crossing when the traffic lights turn green? Um, do you follow social codes when you interact with people? So, you know, whether shaking hands or saying hello or hugging inappropriate times, you know, there's certain rules, there's certain things when we meet people, we know we can do, and there's certain things you can't do. Yeah. It's like unwritten rules and they follow them. So do you pay for items when you go to a shop? That might seem like a silly question, but yes, they do. So these are all rules and these are all actions which they carry out, you know, so you'll be talking to them, you know, and rules that they follow routinely without thinking about them every single day. Now, what you need to ask them is, do you think these rules are restrictive? You know, are they preventing you from living your life or are they making you unhappy? Maybe they do think that the rules they have to follow, particularly at school, are a pain. However, deep down, they do know that if they want to get ahead in life and have, um, you know, function in society and, you know, pass exams, get a job, you know, move on in life, they do have to abide by these rules. You know, you need to get them to think about, imagine a school without any rules, you know, learning would not happen. Um, would they be okay that bullies are allowed to get away with, you know, um, intimidating other students, that teachers, you know, don't teach them properly and just say, yeah, go on your phones. Um, you know, imagine a country without laws, chaos would ensue, criminals would go unpunished, you know, the country would be unproductive. And finally, imagine a family without rules, you know, individualism and disrespect would prevail, you know, who... Par neglectful parents could would love that you know kids who want to be disrespectful and rude and shout and scream at their parents that's the kind of kid who would love a family that had no rules you know if you think about it our whole life is governed by rules and laws for example you know again school rules except have exam rules coursework deadlines specific school holidays um, workplaces have rules you know you have to answer to a boss this particular dress code, you know, your workplace has to pay you. You know, these are all rules that help things um, run smoothly and achieve goals. So that's something that's really important to get, have a discussion with your kids about. Now, um, another question you can ask 
your kids is do you have a choice when it comes to obeying rules? Um, now, we all have a choice whether we obey or disobey. You know, if we do not obey the rules in society, there are then consequences and punishments. You know, there are prisons, <laughs> there's judges, there's law courts. Every society has laws and rules that they have decided to organise society. You know, if you choose to disobey the rules, you're a criminal and you will not be allowed to get away with it. So when we think about all these rules placed on our lo by our local government and you know, councils, we think of them as being necessary, you know, useful. They ensure everything runs smoothly. That's the general view that we and our kids will hold about the rules in society. So why do we feel that the rules that they have to follow in Islam are strict in comparison? But the rules that they follow socially in a school, they are not authoritarian. That's a really important thing they need to think about. The why is Islamic rules, Allah's rules, the Quran, the Sunnah, you know, the Sharia, why that's strict, but all these other rules they abide by day in, day out, they are not. Okay, now another question to ask your kids is how much freedom do they really have? There is this notion that in Western secular liberal societies, we have freedom. If you're unsure about what secular liberal liberalism means, um, go. Uh, if you look up on a previous podcast about um, why our children have doubts about Islam, I, I cover that in there. But um, so we tend to think the freedom we've got the freedom to dress how we want can eat what we want, we can um, socialise with who we want, we have, you basically, you know, it's so much cooler in non-Muslim countries, you know, UK, US, you know, is so much more liberal and it's so much more fun. Um, but really, we do not have unregulated freedom. In reality, what we do have is a wi wide variety of choices when it comes to clothes, food, entertainment, relationships, jobs. Um, but we cannot deny that we all have to follow rules and laws of the land. Um, what I would include here is that later on you must explain to your children that we don't follow a law that contradicts Islam. So as an example, if um, you know we would not um, go and fight in, for example, the, you know, if the, in UK, if the British Army is going fighting Muslims, we would not go and join and go and fight Muslims, yeah? Because you're not allowed to kill another Muslim. That's just one example. Um, these rules and laws are now... The rules that are decided in Western secular countries, um, these rules are laws that are decided by imperfect humans, men and women just like you and me, who are influenced easily and we have biases and we have prejudices these are the people that are making these rules that we follow and historically we can see that people have changed their minds about what they think is good and bad and what's a good law and what's a bad law for example in britain it was still illegal to be gay until 1967 yeah that's not that's like about 40 odd years it was illegal and people could be sent to prison for it. So there was a time when the law and people decided, no, we're, that's not good. We're not going to, that's a lifestyle choice. It's it's morally, it's wrong. Um, and that's what the law was. But now it's okay. Until 1968, abortion was illegal. So again, um, people believed that the child, you know, it was, it was murder if you aborted a child. The right of a woman to say, no, it's my, I want to choose my, it's my body, I choose what I do with it. That that didn't come into the discussion. And another example, smoking ban in England, making it illegal to smoke in all enclosed workplaces in England, came into force just recently in July 2007. Yeah, that's only 12 years ago. So people, when man makes law, man, men and women make law, they change their minds. And I think 
we need to ask ourselves, do you really want to blindly follow rules dictated by people who constantly change their minds? And what that means by changing your mind, it's the, the concept of truth. It doesn't need to seem to exist that you can change. So there's no truth um, that 100 years truth was one thing and now it's something else. You know, in Islam, we don't have that idea. The truth is the truth, you know, in 2019 or whether 1,400 years ago. We don't change our what we believe is true and what is correct. So this naturally brings us to the discussion of um, an idea that children hold that, that the Sharia is strict. And this um, perception is is fed to them by um, the non-Muslim societies that we live in. It's constantly saying that the Sharia, so whether it's the cutting of the hand, um, you know, the stoning of the adulterer, um, not allowing um, homosexuality, this is so strict and unreasonable and illiberal. And so that's the way that Islam is painted, Islamic law is painted to them. So it's no surprise they do say think, uh, question why they should follow Islamic rules. It's not hap- It's not by chance. You know, we shouldn't think our children are bad are bad people, bad Muslims for thinking this day in and day out. So, so, you know, there is this perception that Islamic rules are more difficult and stricter. In fact, if we look at it, um, liberal societies, um, they can have just, a, they do have strict laws. They do control their populations. They monitor their populations. Now, it's interesting, in 2019, Governments control and monitor our actions more than ever before. Now, in um, if you go to the Amnesty International website, it's also the links on my blog. Um, in June 2013, the US whistleblower Edward Snowden revealed that the US and the UK security services are routinely collecting, processing and storing vast quantities of global digital communications including email messages, posts and private messages on social networks, internet histories and phone calls. The UK government hasn't publicly accepted that this mass spying programme exists. They neither confirm nor deny. The existence of Tempora, the mass surveillance system allegedly run by Government Communication Headquarters, GCHQ, that does exist. Um... So, and it was, the way we know it existed um, is that Edward Snowden, he worked for um, the American government and he was shocked, disgusted by what he saw happening in front of him, that people are being spied on and the information has been collected. They've committed no crime, but the government feels they can do this. So um, if we also think about, you know, the amount of CCTV cameras in our cities, um, it's... Both these things, just you should educate your children about this. That look, this is what is going on, yeah. That you need to, you think Islam is strict and you think Islam is controlling you. This is what um, people, when people make laws, this is what they're doing, and uh, they have no problem. They have they have no checks or balances about this. It's you know, only unless you get a whistleblower, um, t- you know, telling on this is what's happening. Um, so these, you know, I'm sure you can think of other examples about the amount of laws and rules we have to follow. And so, you know, isn't this the type of burden and control that our kids are complaining about Islam? But what you need, to, they need to realise is that it's just that instead of Allah, it's people that are deciding the rules you are following. We Now, you know, we know Allah loves us, Allah cares for us takes care of our needs and knows what is best for us um, because he created us. So that when we follow his rules, um, it, it it's in tune with our fitra, it's in tune with what we need rather than what a human being thinks, oh, in this time, this is the rule, but maybe in 20 years it will change. And we, the, as the examples I gave you, it, that is what has happened. Now, Allah says to us, you know, Allah knows what we are like and that we will question his laws. And um, so in the Quran, in Surah 2, Ayah 216, Allah says, but perhaps you hate a thing and it is good for you. And perhaps you love a thing and it is bad for you. 
and Allah knows while you know not. So if you think of the things that our kids might complain about that, you know, why can't I go out? Why can't, why do I have to fast? Why do I have to be respectful? Why do, you know, why can't, so many things that, you know, alcohol is haram, drugs are haram, um, dating is haram, you know. And again, and it says, um, it, because it could be bad for you and Allah knows best. You know, our children don't have the, they're not um, mature enough to grasp this idea, but it's our duty to explain that to them. So um, in a, also in a Hadith Nawawiya, the Prophet وسلم, said, Verily Allah the Almighty has laid down faraid, religious obligations, so do not neglect them. He has set boundaries, so do not overstep them. He has prohibited some things, so do not violate them. About some things he was silent on, out of compassion for you, not forgetfulness, so seek not after them. It's so important that our children understand when we are instructing them to obey Allah, to you know follow the rules that Allah has set out for us and them, that it's out of love that we're doing it and that it's because Islam is the truth and that we know that Allah cares for us, Allah wants the best for us, and we are created by him. Now, the thing is that the possibly what you may need to have is actually go have a deeper discussion about why um, they should believe that Allah is their creator, that maybe that's something that they um, a bit uh, they want to speak to you about, but they don't want to say it blatantly, that you know what, maybe I do, I'm not sure that Allah does really exist, that why... Why should I believe that the Quran is the word of Allah? Why should I follow the Hadith? You know, these are things that we may find difficult to hear from our children, but it maybe it's a good idea that we initiate that discussion. And that's actually what the problem is here. It's not that they don't want to obey Allah, they don't want to follow the Quran and Sunnah. They they just have some doubts. And that's something I've spoken about in previous podcasts. That That is a phenomena now. And our children are really being... Um, you know, they're under attack, you know, that's a strong word, but their belief, sorry, is under attack. And they are being told in school, in society, to question their religion, to, you know, religion is painted as a very backward, it's not liberal, it's, you know, unscientific. So we have to you know, sometimes remind them and we can't just think that, yeah, they we believe, so they believe. Yeah, so now what it is, it's, I have on my website, I have a book, it's called Belief in Allah, the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what I went through is the arguments in a, you know, in a simple way, not too difficult for your stu- kids to understand and for you to read and then explain to them. So you can go on the site website and you can order that book. It's, um, you, you order it in its day, you can download it straight away. So that may be something a resource that could help you with the discussion that you're having and um so yeah so that's the way that i would answer that question of why does islam have so many rules why is it is everything haram you know our kids can say that to us sometimes and inshallah i would love to if you have any suggestions if there's anything that worked really well for you please send me an email or on anchor you can leave a voice message and i could include it in the next podcast Uh, so my email is info at farhatamin.com and inshallah I look forward to um, speaking again at the next podcast. Asalaamu Alaikum.